Today we've got a great entitled parent story of fighting back against some really intolerable parents. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, entitled mom and son get destroyed by my friends and my teacher. Okay, some context, I'm part of an esports team, Super Smash Bros Ultimate for my school. Me and a group of buddies proposed the esports team to the school. Took many months, but we finally got it. Anyway, getting into the story, we got some characters to establish. Entitled Mom, Entitled Kid, Me, Co-Coach, John is my friend, and finally Michael is too. Not their real names. Also, some conversations might not be exact, though I asked my friends about the incident so I could get it as accurately as possible. So anyway, at the beginning of the school year, our school announced the esports team and that got a lot of kids to sign up. It was pretty big, like 50 or so kids joined. About 12 kids joined the Smash team for the middle school team, which will be our main game. I practiced very hard just to get in, and all my work paid off, as I was the third best player. Our rankings were shown in the Discord. And Michael got second and John got first, so we all rejoiced when the rankings were announced. While we did practices at school, I met Entitled Kid. Now, Entitled Kid was nice and everything. He was just really, really annoying and cocky. He was the cliche, rich, naughty kid who hasn't worked a day in his life and his mom was well known. He would complain and call everyone a spammer if he didn't win. He would always complain that I was third and he should get the title of Wamu. To clarify, we're all big weebs, so the top three got the title of Wamu third, ACDC second, and Cars as first, the Order of the Pillar Men. He would always get in my face and call me a wussy when I didn't battle him for the fifth time and lost. I should also mention that I was in middle school and my friends were in high school, important for later. Near the end of the semester, Co-Coach had a meeting with us about the future of our team. During this, he announced that I would be moving up to the high school team. I popped off during this while John and Michael high-fived me. Entitled Kid did not like this one bit. The Entitled Kid says, Why does he have it? He sucks! Co-Coach says, Because I've seen him do better than most of the middle schoolers, and even bested some of our best players and got the title of Wamu. The Entitled Kid says, Yeah, and he doesn't deserve it. It's not fair. Now at this point, Entitled Kid was bawling his eyes out and Coach ended our meeting. I told my mom about it and she just laughed and congratulated me. Then comes the next day, we had practice, and when I was about to walk into the room, I heard the classic, Ahem. I was startled and I looked back and I saw a skinny pale woman I recognized but couldn't tell who. The Entitled Mother says, Are you OP? I say, um, yeah, I'm about to head into practice, but I have time. What do you need? It was Entitled Kid's mom. She says, I heard recently that you got into the high school team. Very impressive. I said, um, thank you. I was getting a bit annoyed because I could tell by the tone of her voice that this wasn't going to be easy. She said, you might have met my son, Entitled Kid. He really wants to join the high school team and play with the big kids. Would you please give up that chance to my boy? I said, uh, no. She says, why not? Not like you deserve it. I say, ma'am, with all respect to your child, I don't think he's ready. I also earned this chance by practicing. Plus, I don't think I even have the power to do that. She says, ugh, fine. Do you know who I could talk to? I say, yeah, coach is inside. You can come with me to discuss it. I was getting annoyed, but I try to be as polite as possible. So me and her go inside and I go to John and Michael and play a couple of games. They ask me what happened and I explain. They laughed and told me that she was crazy. While we were playing, we listened in on the conversation. We weren't listening for the beginning and this is where we started listening. Entitled Mother says, but why can't he replace him? Coach says, I already told you, we only give that to people who have shown us that they're above their level. And Entitled Kid has clearly not shown that. Now, Entitled Kid was in the room at the time, still annoying all of us like he usually does. Entitled Kid hears the conversation and joins in. Yeah, coach, he sucks. He's scared to face me. Now, let me tell you how we got the titles for our group. John got cars because he's the best in an absolutely crazy, in a good way. He will make sure you have endured lots of emotional pain before he finishes you. Michael got ECDC because he would be losing by two stocks and make the greatest comeback. I got Wamu because not only am I the worst in our group, but I also like respect. The type you earn by being nice and a good guy in general. Hearing him talk crap about me and my friends for half a year finally just made me burst. My friends were all getting annoyed and this was the straw that broke the camel's back. 
I said, if you think you're so good, come up here right now, you little crap. The entitled mother said, what did you call him? I said, you heard me. If you can beat me once in a three rounds, no, even taking a single stock, I'll let you take my place. My friends were standing by me and basically said the same thing. The now cocky entitled kid said sure and connected his controller while entitled mother was furious. One thing I should let you know is that even though I'm all about respect, I play one of the dirtiest characters in Smash. Ness, baby. For people who play Smash, you know he's one of the worst characters to go up against. Also, for the people who don't play Smash, Ness has a move that is considered spammy and annoying, and I try to avoid using it too much. But in this battle, I made heck itself rain down on this kid while he could barely get a hit. After the battle, Entitled Mother and Entitled Kid were yelling at me and Coach. Entitled Kid even tried to get physical and did the worst thing he could have done. Swing a punch, miss, and hit a PC right on the glass. His knuckles were bloody and the PC was shattered. This made Coach not only ban Entitled Kid from joining esports, he had to pay for the $3,000 Alienware PC. This made Entitled Mother angry and was about to yell and get physical, but we were all pushing her and Entitled Kid out the door. To say I was satisfied would be an understatement, though I was sad though to not see Entitled Kid go up against Michael and John. There's a lot to unpack here for people who don't play games or especially just don't know anything about Smash Bros. Like for example, OP said, if you can beat me, no wait, if you just take a stock, a stock is a life in Smash Bros. And you usually have three of them. This is like the unskilled kid that wants to shoot the basketball every time it finds their way to them, but they never make any of the shots and think they're super good. Also, the idea of having an esports team in school is pretty crazy and foreign to me. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about entitled parents, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, providing shelter and food isn't enough when raising kids. Growing up, I had two busy working parents. They were able to provide for us, three kids, but they didn't provide us with a healthy emotional and mental home life. My father was always cheating on my mother. The youngest I remember was when I was four, I questioned why he locked himself in his bedroom with a woman I'd never seen before and sent my sister and I to go play outside with his stranger's daughter. My mother was working. I remember knocking on his door and he took an eternity to open it. I questioned my mother the following day about what happened. This wasn't the only time my mother caught him cheating. We had a live-in nanny. She was a family friend and years after being with us, my mother caught my dad in her room. He cheated on my mother with her own sister and her brother's wife, and then his cousin's wife. I could keep going. His customers were also his affair partners. My mother put up with it. When I moved out for college, I never came home because it never felt like I had a home. My parents never made time for us to spend together as a family, never had family trips, never celebrated birthdays or holidays. It always felt cold at home. I moved back home after college, there was a market crash, I couldn't find a job. By now they were divorcing, it was messy, I hated that time, but I was glad they were divorcing, it needed to happen. My mother didn't take it well so she made it harder, she wanted more money from him and made us all suffer. At some point my father asked me to support him by going to court and siding with him with how difficult she was making it. I refused. Two wrongs make no right and it's also none of my business. By the way, did I mention my mom had an affair at the end and to which is why my father filed for divorce? I was in my early 20s doing odd jobs while I looked for a full time nurse career because there wasn't anything for new grads. I moved in with an aunt because I couldn't stand my mother anymore. She really was making it difficult on my mental health. My car was stolen a month later. It never really was mine, it was under my father's name, a little Corolla that helped me throughout college. I was devastated though, I needed it the most now to get to work. Eventually, I found a full time job and moved a mile close to it. As time passed, I attempted to reach out to my parents to let them know I was fine. My father would hang up on me. I realized he was still upset that I didn't side with him in court. I let more time pass and texted him instead. I received a sour reply, somewhere along the lines of, how do you think I'm doing? Not great. If you went to court with me when I asked you to, this would have been over. You're ungrateful after all the money I spent for you to get an education. By the way, I stole the car. 
I took it back so you can feel the struggle without my help. I wasn't even angry. I felt sorry for him. I last texted him, you and mom need to grow up. I never reached out again. It's been 12 years now. I'm married and have a nine year old. He's never met my now family. My mother has moved on too. She admitted to me recently that she keeps in touch with him, mostly because of my brother's drug addiction. She said he supposedly cried to her because I don't talk to him. According to my mother, I need to be the bigger person and reach out to him regardless of the past. Last week, she came at me so wrong and blamed me for why I had a fallout with my father. She says because I can't let go of grudges and I need to grow up and reach out to him now that he's alive, she says. He's going to die someday and I'll regret never mending the relationship. For some reason, she thinks I'm still mad about the car. I had to emphasize it to her that the last time I reached out, he didn't want to talk to me. It's awkward now. Why can't he reach out to me? Why can't he be the man and mend the relationship he broke that he supposedly cries about? I did her a favor and texted him so she can get off my case. I also told her if she just agreed with the divorce papers initially and with what he was offering, for her to keep two houses and not touch his business, I wouldn't be in this situation. I texted, Hi dad, it's OP. Mom told me you've been wanting to talk to me, but I don't understand why you don't reach out. The last time I reached out to you, you weren't interested in talking, so I left you alone. How are you? And it's been over two weeks, and crickets. I'm upset at mom for annoying me about this, something that isn't her business. She's divorced him, she can now leave me alone about it. If he wants a relationship with me, he needs to be a man about it. My parents suck. I'm older now with my own kid. I make sure she is emotionally, physically, and mentally well. I work long hours, but I also make time for holidays, birthdays, trips, unlike they did. I make time for her so she can trust me, love me, and remember me. I say I love you every single day more than once, something I never heard from them. My parents have this idea that I owe them the utmost respect because they birthed me and paid for my schooling in my mother's own words. I think considering how much time has gone by, if they didn't change by now, it's likely they're never going to change. I'm also wondering the legitimacy of what OP's mom was telling them. Was he actually crying over it or is this something that maybe she feels guilty about or she just hates to see OP and their father not having a relationship? I don't know. Our next story is, is my mom just jealous of me? She starts fights randomly, reason being she resents me. She tries to compete with me in a number of ways, some of which are just pure juvenile and on top of how stupid it is for a grown woman to be concerned with her statements won't make any sense. She also tells me she's going to make X amount every week and asks how much I make and says she probably makes more. She says she got the job, but since she was suddenly being so witchy, I don't think she did. There's a lot of nonsensical stuff she would bother me about, and I have no idea how she came up with some of the issues she did. She also lies and says everyone's calling me a loser when they're not. Plus, I've accomplished plenty of things she hasn't. She's for sure an underachiever. She also accuses me of wanting her stupid boyfriends and adds people I know on Facebook. Is she just jealous because I'm doing better in life than her and have accomplished way more? She should have stuff figured out since she's older. Thoughts? 100% this is like disappointingly trying to undermine you to make themselves feel better. I don't know what the best way to deal with this is, but I personally would just try to keep my head above it. Basically keeping in mind however she tries to put down what I'm doing, that I still know the actual truth and it's not a competition regardless. Our next story is, I want to live with my brother but my parents forbade me part 3. Hey guys, thank you so much for your support, and believe me I'm fine and my brother's better, but fine is not enough for him. He wants my custody at all costs, and goes after my parents with everything he has. Well, I wouldn't be here if it was to just say that we're fine. Let's get to the story. We were having a quiet afternoon until there was a knock on the door, which had already been repaired by a friend of Kirby's, my brother, grandfather. I went to answer it, but was very surprised to see my father there. I sent him away at once, but he said he just wanted to talk and didn't want to cause a fuss. I told him to screw off and told him we'd only talk in court. However, my dad insisted and Kirby's grandparents threatened to call the police. 
but to our surprise, Kirby said to let him come in. We questioned him, but he just said my dad was a pushy idiot and he wouldn't go away easily, so it was better to let him in to get it over with. So we let him in, but we were prepared in case he got aggressive. He and Kirby sat at the kitchen table. We all stayed in the kitchen for safety, and Kirby's grandmother was recording to have one more bit of proof that my father broke the provisional measure my brother got. The conversation was as follows. Kirby said, very brave of you to come back here after all you've done. Father said, I'm sorry, I'll swear I'll pay for all the damage. Kirby says, pay? Of course, you can solve everything with money, right? But I'm not talking about material goods, that's replaceable. But what you did to me is priceless. He said, I know, I'm sorry. I swear I would give my life to go back in time. I would do everything differently. Kirby said, yeah, but unfortunately you can't go back in time and the damage has already been done. You destroyed me. You destroyed your family. Father said, but it was an accident. If you had told us from the beginning, maybe it would have been different. Kirby said, you didn't want to listen to me. Now do you know what you did to me? You made me feel that I wasn't worthy to live. You made me want to disappear. Do you have any idea what it's like to feel that? No, because you're a freaking jerk. And the aggressor will never feel the fear that the victim felt, you witch. At that point, Kirby started to cry, but it was a cry of anger and resentment that he kept for all these years. My father continued to ask in vain, but my brother said that the fact that he wants to apologize is not because he regrets what he did, but rather to feel good about himself. However, my dad kept apologizing, apologizing so much that my brother threw his ultimatum right there, even though he was close to having another anxiety attack. Kirby said, do you want forgiveness? Here's what we're going to do. You're going to give me custody of my brother, you're going to pay his child support, and you're never going to try to get close to me, him, or any of us again, or else I guarantee you, Ricard, fake name, that I will make your days a real heck. My father agreed instantly. I'll tell you that I don't feel sorry for my father, but I've never seen him as defeated as he did in that moment. I think the shock of his actions finally hit him hard, but I don't feel sorry for him. He deserves this. He deserves to feel the misery he caused our family. Soon after all this, he left saying he was going to try and convince my mother to give up my custody. He also asked me for forgiveness, but I just ignored him. So at the exact moment he walked out the door, my brother broke down. I think his courage had dropped at that moment. He started crying and was on his knees on the floor, hyperventilating and sweating very cold. We took him through the room so he could lie down. We gave him his medicine for anxiety, but nothing seemed to help. I called my sister and told her everything that had happened. She came immediately and we all stayed in the room trying to calm him down. My sister kept saying that my brother in that moment was one of the bravest people we knew. However fearful he was, he was strong enough to stay in the same room as my father, his abuser. After many hours, my brother finally calmed down and managed to sleep, so just in case, Lucy and I slept together with him because he could have many nightmares after that. But of course, nothing could end like that. My mom called us hours later asking what demon slash Kirby had done to her husband. She was accusing my brother of having bewitched her sweet hubby, and now that he wanted to give everything to him, my sister just told her to freak off and said that at least one of them had come to their senses. Well, again, I hope everything works out and my mom finally comes to her senses and does the right thing. Thanks so much for everyone's support, and thanks to you Steve who owns this account and has always been there for me since I told my history. When you're raised in a household with parents like this who treat you like nothing you do is ever going to be good enough and legitimately hurt you, you can't imagine how fearful and how much courage it has to take to stand up to them face to face in the way that Kirby in this story did. Our next story is, Entitled Parents Doesn't Mind Not Working or Caring About Money in Their Mid-50s. I'm tired of my young, adult, divorced parents financially depending on me to pay their bills. I'll try to make it short. My parents are terrible with money. They don't have any concern on saving it and will expend until the last dime. My dad barely works, makes no money at all, and never pays anyone back after loaning money, including me. Last week, he told me that he doesn't want to keep working for other people and asked if I could make a loan under my name so he could start a business. I'm not dumb and told him no straight away. Keep in mind that I already paid for a lot of his bills under the promise that he would pay me back. 
and guess what? Never saw that money again. My mom had a half-time job last year, which was actually only 16 hours a week. She insisted to not live with my sister anymore, and she wanted to live by herself. I told her that she wasn't making enough money to pay for her rent and expenses, and she proceeds to tell me that that was her concern, and dad would help her. I told her multiple times that relying on dad was extremely risky, and she would not have the money to pay for her expenses. Now for my surprise, she doesn't have that job anymore because when they had to renew her contract, she forgot to send the documentation. My dad doesn't have any money to send to her. I don't even know if he's working anymore. I have two jobs and I work my butt off. I'm getting old and I'm not aging well because of the stress and not being able to take care of myself. Even if I make good money, I hate the fact that I need to financially help them every single month. My mother lost her job two months ago and she's still living by herself even after my sister told our mother to live with her. Not only that, my sister told me that she, our mother, is involved with a married man. Jesus Christ, I'm so disappointed with them. I'm really, really struggling to understand them. I took a hard decision today. For the last time I helped them, another 3,000 burned to the ground. I blocked their numbers and for the next 6 months I'll cut contact with them. I just can't deal with this anymore. I care about them, but right now is just too complicated for me to deal with it. Can I do anything else? I don't think there really is much more that OP can do besides stop throwing them a lifeline. In kind of the flip scenario, when you as an adult have an adult kid who isn't financially supporting themselves, at some point you kind of just have to cut them off and let them realize they've got to move and find some work and find a way to support themselves. You don't want to be an enabler. Our next story is, my father ignored me and just bought my childhood home. My parents got divorced a few years back and didn't know what to do with the house. I lived with my mom in that house until now and helped one of her friends doing some repairs. My father on the other hand just bought the house with the help of a somewhat stupid German law and forces us out until the 1st of April. I mean, I'm somewhat happy that my mom managed to just buy a new home where she can live in one half and my girlfriend and I in the other, just I feel like my childhood home was stolen from me with all the memories, good ones and bad ones. I got and lost my first dog in this house. He's buried in the garden. My father hated the dog. He blames me for the divorce because I started defending myself against his narcissistic and abusive behavior. I just finished my apprenticeship and he didn't even say anything. I walked past him on the street and he just stared down. My mother always says that, that I should at least try and reconnect with him because he's my father. But every time I see him, anger and disgust come boiling up. Any advice, my DMs are open. I definitely don't know whatever law or regulation allowed the father to just buy the house, but I think the main thing OP really seems hung up on are the memories. I would just try to accept that while they own the house and all of the memories are mostly in that place, you still have those memories and try to find ways to preserve those memories wherever you are. Whether that's taking pictures or having a memento or what matters most is the memories, not where the memories happened. Our next story is, mother threatened to call the police on me and kick me out of the house over the most minor dispute, female 18. I feel so distraught right now, I never thought I'd hear those words from someone who claims I'm their entire life. I'm an only child and my mother and I have always had a bit of a rocky relationship. Since I was little, I did everything I could to please her and make her proud and my self-esteem relied on academic validation that I got from being top of all my classes. I would often avoid going out because I would prioritize studying and I never had any social media because my parents thought it would distract me. I've literally never messed up. I always do the right thing and always respect the wishes of my mother. That being said, I can't drive, don't have a job and don't do chores because they raised me to be completely dependent on them and said that the only thing they expected from me was to excel. I feel like she controls everything I do and then love bombs me so I forget about what just happened as a form of gaslighting. She tells me I'm her best friend. She even cries sometimes telling me how sad she's gonna be when I move out and that she would go anywhere I go just so we could be together forever. Which kinda bothers me but I understand she's lonely. 
We are immigrants and it's been difficult for her to find time to socialize or whatever. The dynamic between us is weird and it goes from being super close to us yelling and screaming at one another over the smallest things. As I turned 18 recently, I went clubbing with a few friends and we ended up staying a little longer than intended and I got home at 1am. She was furious at the time and said she wouldn't be staying up till that time for me to come back and that I would have to be back earlier. I brought it up again today and she flipped out saying that I had some kind of privilege thinking that just because I was studious all through high school, I had some right to be home late and that I was desperate not to miss out. Mind you, I never go out and this was the first time I was home late. She said I would have to be back by 10, which I said was completely unreasonable as the commute itself takes 40 minutes and when you go out with a big group of friends at this age, you can't just tell everyone to end the night early so that I can be back home on time. After protesting, she ended up threatening to kick me out of the house and call the police on me next time if I dare come back any later than 10pm and said that if I wanted to live like that, I could move out and live by myself and back at whatever time I wanted insinuating that I was some kind of who are that wanted to party and stay out till 2 in the morning, which was never the case. This kind of emotional abuse drives me insane. All my life she's being controlling, my social life and forcing me to study. I'm a burnt out gifted kid with no life skills. It's meant as a protective measure but it just feels controlling to me. Maybe I'm too young to understand. I'm looking for some advice on how to improve our relationship and how to reason with someone as insane as her. She will literally blow up over the smallest things. I know I need to start becoming more independent as that's the one thing holding me back from being my own person. Maybe that's what she's wanted all along. For me to be completely reliant on her so that I'd have to stick around forever. I don't freaking know. If anyone can relate, please let me know how your relationship with your mother turned out later. I just think OP needs to continue fighting for their independence as an 18 year old. Considering that OP said they are usually super close with their mother, I think this is just the mother wanting some serious control over OP. And considering they've been super close, I don't think with OP pushing back and continuing to get more and more independence that the mom really will go nuclear and cut OP off and kick them out. This next story is pushed back on my parents' racist behavior and got screamed at for being disrespectful and ungrateful. So I'm 24-year-old male. I've been dating my 21-year-old female girlfriend for a few months. She's wonderful and I love her. She's black and I'm white. Our race has never been an issue between us or with her family, who are all super welcoming and kind to me. Well, I wanted her to meet my parents in another city and I had an opportunity to go back coming up. My dad has been hinting that she isn't right for me and our relationship is doomed to fail and she's lazy and going to be a drain and an anchor on me since we met. He's been nothing but negative about her. He said my mom was very upset about other factors like age difference and that she agreed with him that the relationship would never work. I asked if she could come on my trip and my dad just went silent for five minutes. When he started talking, he went on a two-hour tangent basically saying she can't come because my grandpa might be racist towards her. Then I get a text from my sister telling me he asked her to speak to me and that I can't pick good women. Then my mom texts me saying I should wait a few months to bring her, citing all kinds of excuses like the weather and her being busy that weekend. So I finally confronted my mom that it's not any of their excuses. It's that my parents have decided they don't like my girlfriend with no knowledge about her and they don't want her there and are coming up with excuses. I told my mom that I'd hoped meeting her would end this type of behavior and they could see what kind of person she is and I asked my mom to not judge and give her a chance. Well, I got a call from my dad screaming at me saying how dare you speak to your mother like that and that I'm a jerk and I wouldn't be anywhere in life without him dragging me there because I'm useless and stupid and demanding I apologize to my mom for daring to push back on their behavior. He eventually said that I'm not welcome at their house and not to speak to my mom again unless it's to apologize and recant everything I said. Then he texted me saying he can't save me from myself and that I must be mentally ill for doing what I'm doing. I'm thinking about honestly just cutting them off at this point. It's just the latest in a long string of gaslighting and verbal abuse. 
they would 100% not be acting this way if my girlfriend was white with a college degree. They haven't with any of those girls I dated. Update, my dad texted me to inform me that I'm a chicken poop jack butt and he hopes I handle being verbally spanked by me like you did being physically spanked at 4 when you talked back to your mother. These just seem like intolerable people to me in general. And also, I have to question, do they even actually like OP? Do they treat OP on his own fine? Like, do they want to be around OP? Would they be better off or happier just not having OP around? Because I kind of get that vibe from them. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.